Okay. Continuing with chapter 21, part 10. This is where I ended off. It's on verse 4 with Rashi's commentary where he says, we thought he was hated by God. Okay, so we, that's the Jewish people, thought that he, that's the righteous servant, which they say is all of the Jewish people gathered as one man. So the Jewish people thought the Jewish people were hated by God. Show it to me. Show it to me in the Hebrew Bible. I don't think. Now, there, there may have been plenty of Jews during the Holocaust who thought that. Um, but it still wouldn't be all of them. Because I'm sure there was a feeling of, why doesn't he stop this? And I got the answer to that from God, by the way. You want me to tell Basically, it what God would say and has said, it's in here in the book and on video, I think. Um, I gave them that land. Okay? They got run off. But they could have come back hundreds of years before they did and not because they were forced to. When they were forced to learn that they cannot be separated. They had to be together as much as all one man as possible. And he says, so they left. Then they didn't come back. Well, God says, I'm not going to go get them. And I didn't cause the Holocaust to drive them back as Tobias Singer teaches, which makes God just irate. As irate as he is with the Gentiles saying he would accept a human sacrifice in particular, a human sacrifice that presumably he caused. I have rate. And when you start talking about him killing his children, and Toby the singer uses six million of them murdered. God just said, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm just waiting for them to come back, and I already know they will make it back. I don't know the number that's going to make it, but I'm close. But that's, that's what it is. That's just not the way he works. Yeah, I mean, you have to know him as I know him, I suppose, to really understand what he's saying. Well, yeah. Uh, he raised up armies, caused plagues and famines. I mean, he can be... <laughs> he, can, he can be pretty tough. You gotta be a servant if you really want no pain. He can put a pain on any part of your body in any manner and do all kinds of maltreatment. Just horrible things. I, call, I asked him. I'll just sum it up without a bunch of stories. I'll sum it up. So I see these words. Wounded. And God's teaching me that these words come from the fire of refinement that you're going through. Wounded. Punished. Maltreated. Crushed. Bruised. Chastised. And I say, well, I see you doing all that with me. And people, I'm not talking about for five minutes. These things can go on for days, weeks, and months. Whatever he's doing at the moment, he's always coming up with something new. And uh, what? Oh, I finished telling that story. I don't know. He controls my mind. See, he's just caused me embarrassment on, on a video that I'm putting on for him as his representation. He embarrasses me by blanking my mind. I absolutely do not know what I was saying. And that's not me. You know, <laughs> I wasn't like that before he spoke to me. Okay, enough for Rashi and that. We see us stuff. Here's my commentary on verse 4. Using the JPS, 1985. Yet it was our sickness that he was bearing, the suffering that he endured. Our suffering that he endured. We accounted him plagues, smitten and afflicted by God. 
It was our sickness that he was bearing. Commentary. Our suffering that he endured. Okay, commentary. The sickness is not being righteous. The witnesses suffer the sickness of not being righteous and not being in right standing with God. God's righteous servant suffers by the chastisement, punishment, bruising, crushing, and maltreatment laid on him by the words and power of God who afflicts him with disease to make him suitable for his purpose that might prosper. And that purpose we find in Malachi 3 is to return to his temple. He wants to live amongst the Jewish people again. A purpose that includes his righteous servant making the many righteous. So see, I go through all this, but it's just to get me to where I need to be. You know, I wasn't born to this, but I'm ready to tackle it now with what I've been through with God. And so, you know, it's not a vicarious suffering. What did they say? It was our suffering that he endured. No, they're suffering their own suffering. They're suffering right now. I haven't lifted it from them. But as the righteous servant, preaching God's law and telling them that God is here and their sin and forgiveness in a new covenant, don't make any more mistakes. Get back to synagogue. And we're hoping, and God believes, or knows, that, that, that that's going to bring the many made righteous who will turn into a multitude. And no, I do not have the numbers on that. A purpose that includes his righteous servant making the many righteous by his knowledge with long life and the building of the third temple. Okay, I'm going to cut it off there. Wait a minute. Yeah, I got about a little more than a pace to do, I guess. I'll pick it up there.